Hello, my name is Sanghua Li from Hanmaum Church in Chuncheon. I thought that there was nothing after death, so I decided that if my mother died, I would die with her. But through the resurrection gospel, I have learned that there is an eternal kingdom and confess that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I would like to share this testimony with you. Starting from when I was six years old, I was often separated from my mother and was brought up by my grandmother. The reason was that my mother had a disease called heart valve syndrome. At that time, this kind of illness was a very serious illness, and, because we could not afford the surgery, everyone thought that my mother would not live for long. My grandmother wanted my father to remarry, and she did not let my sisters and I meet my mother to prevent us from being too attached to her. During this time, I couldn't even say I wanted to see my mother, and on some days, my sisters and I would just cry because we missed her. As time passed, the longing for my mother grew bigger and bigger. When I was in my first year of elementary school, I met my mother, whom I had thought was dead. I was so happy and decided that I would never be separated from my mother ever again, even till death. After she married, my mother was attending a church after a relative evangelized to her. My mother, who had previously been waiting for her inevitable death due to her illness, would drag her sick body to church and pray every day. But later, with the help of the people around me who had been worried about my mother's condition, we were able to obtain a surgery fee, and my mother was able to go to a big hospital in Seoul for surgery. Unfortunately, we were too late, and the doctor told us that, with her current state, it was a miracle that my mother was even alive. The probability that my mother's surgery would succeed was less than 2%. Thankfully, the operation went really well, but, due to excessive overworking at home and stress, she collapsed again with a cerebral hemorrhage when she was 36 years old. She came back home in a few months, but was paralyzed in one hand and one foot, and could not walk very well. Even still, just being able to live together with my mother was a true blessing. My father drank almost every day. To my church-going mother, he would get angry and say that church destroys families and would cause an uproar at home. Despite this, my mother did not give up her faith. Through my mother, I grew up in the church and was able to become the president of the youth ministry, a singer in the church choir, and participate in every retreat and revival event. Wednesday worship and Sunday worship services were unconditionally attended, and whenever I was on vacation or otherwise had time, I would go to morning prayer with my mother every day. But the only reason I was attending church was that I was afraid of upsetting my mother by missing a service. I was afraid that she might hate me if I told her that I wouldn't attend church. When I was a high school student, I opposed my drunken father one day, and he hit me across the cheek, so I left home. But I was worried about my mother, and I came home the next day. Nearly all of my friends had left home at least once, and, as I became a high school student, I really did not want to stay at home, but I could not leave the house. This was because my mother had said to me that if I left, she would leave too. As a result, the only escape I had was to smoke cigarettes. Whenever I smoked, I would feel calmer, and I liked that feeling. My friend and I would go up to a hill at the back of our town and smoke a pack of cigarettes for almost an hour. As we were walking down the street enjoying the slight dizziness and downing effect of the smokes, we happened to see an old man who was walking with great difficulty. But the many people nearby completely ignored him like he didn't exist. As I saw his state, I thought of how sad and frightening it would be to become old and alone. When I thought about how I would be alone and grow lonely once my mother had passed away, and my sisters got married, I told myself that I would die along with my mom when she passed away. My mother was expected to live for 20 more years on her prosthetic valve, and a life without my mother had no purpose or meaning anyway. After finishing my military service, I was spending most of my time at pool lounges and internet cafes, and my mother told me that I should get a job and be independent. Because I could not find a place to work near my house, I was forced to find a job in another area. Living away from my mother, I found that I stopped going to church regularly. Still, prayer had been a part of my life since I was a child, and, maybe out of habit, I would recite the Lord's Prayer every night before sleeping. <laughs> One day, my mother told me that I should meet a woman of faith and marry. From then on, I started to think about marriage with some interest. I had doubts like, should I start a family even though I don't want to live long? But because my mother had told me to, I felt that I should and I gave a single, sincere prayer to God for me to meet someone with faith. <laughs> After praying that prayer, I moved on and forgot about it, 
but one day I met an old friend from elementary school whom I hadn't kept in touch with for a long time. But suddenly, she started talking to me about church. I could tell that she had only recently started attending church, but she was telling me about Christianity. Me, who had been the president of our high school and young adults ministries, part of the choir, and had gone to church for 26 years. The friend asked me, Who is Jesus to you? And I said, A friend? <laughs> A friend you could lean on in the face of impossible situations. Then she asked me, Then who is your Lord? Who is the Lord of your life? And I was dumbfounded at that moment. The owner of my life was of course me, but I was not able to confidently say that, and I found myself acting like a criminal caught in the act, unable to say anything. But suddenly, the friend said that the Lord of our lives was Jesus. Even though she and I both went to church, something about the assurance with which she said that made me think, wow, she has a strong faith. So I followed her to the church she attended. There, one of the members spoke to me about the word of God. He told me that, after Jesus had died and risen again, he had become the Lord of the dead and the living. As he told me that Lord meant owner, I realized that the Lord that I had called on out of habit during my whole life was completely different from the Lord that I was learning about from this meeting. Although there was much of the Bible that I couldn't believe in, I didn't have negative feelings to the statement that Jesus was my Lord. But my life did not change. I still liked to smoke and enjoyed drinking and playing with my colleagues at work. Sometimes I would have a thought like, I said I believed in Jesus, so why doesn't my life change? I'm attending church, but am I really a person of faith? And it would bother me a lot. When I looked at other churchgoers, I knew for sure that their lives were different from mine. Because of this, I began attending a small church meeting every week. I thought that something might cause me to change as soon as I started going to these meetings. Around then, the person who had been mentoring me told me that God would make everything happen for me. But even though I attended several meetings, nothing touched my heart and there was no change in my life. Christ had died for our sins according to the scriptures, and, after he was buried, he had risen again on the third day according to the scriptures and had become our Lord. But as much as I tried to, I couldn't believe in the resurrection. I wanted to, but even when I put in the effort, I just couldn't believe. I felt that, since they were disciples, they could have fabricated the resurrection, and this stopped me from being able to believe. So as I read the Bible, I would believe in the parts that I could understand, and for the parts I couldn't understand, like the resurrection, I'd pass over it, thinking, sure, sure. I thought that, because I had experiences and had the gift of tongues, I could believe that God was alive. When I prayed in tongues, I could feel the fiery heat of the Holy Spirit, and I really liked those times, but when I thought about it, I found that I had no sure proof for God. So I desperately prayed for me to be able to lay down everything and believe in the resurrection of Jesus. While I was praying, I realized that I had been trying to believe in the resurrection with my feelings and emotions. Then I had the thought that maybe I needed to stand in front of the evidence that God had provided. I just needed to find out whether this resurrection in the scriptures was a real event in history. For this reason, I started reading the Bible. And in Acts, it said that Paul had been a witness to the Gentiles. To me, that passage felt like God's voice was telling me to examine Paul. So I looked at the Bible to see if Paul really was a historical figure, and a person who did not believe in Jesus, and if he really had seen Jesus. I became sure that Paul had clearly seen Jesus. I saw that Paul, who had persecuted and arrested the witnesses of the resurrection, had one day suddenly begun to be stoned and jailed for preaching Jesus' resurrection and lordship. I also saw that Paul had confessed that knowing everything outside Jesus was nothing, and that the things of the world were a waste, and that he did not fear death as he chased the Lord. And I couldn't help but wonder what could possibly change someone in this way. I thought, Paul really couldn't have lived this kind of life without having met the risen Jesus face to face. Jesus has risen, and God is really alive then I was able to see the focus of my heart. I had said that I believed in Jesus, but it hadn't been belief. I had said that I'd believed in Jesus, but it hadn't been belief. It was just that I had known about Jesus. As a result, I hadn't been able to trust him, even just a little. 
I'd become my own lord, bearing all my weight by myself. Peter had said, This Jesus whom you crucified. And it was as though I had personally nailed him to that cross. The heart with which I did not believe was the same as the heart of the people who did not believe in Jesus and had crucified him. Really, I was so remorseful. And sorry that I couldn't say anything. And while I was on my knees crying, the Lord showed me his heart through the cross. That he loved me more than his own life. In the face of the one who had gone through death and resurrection to show me his love, I repented and accepted Jesus as my Lord. As I repented through the gospel and accepted Jesus as my Lord, I began a family within the gospel. I met a partner in Christ with whom I could become eternal co-workers for the gospel. <laughs> I married the friend who had brought me to church. After we married and settled down, I kept thinking, is it really okay for me to just live a life of eating and living well while confessing that Jesus is my Lord? There must be some purpose that the Lord wants me to fulfill. With this in mind, I prayed, what is it that you truly desire, God? And I was reading the Bible when he revealed to me this passage in 1 Timothy. God, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. I disliked standing in front of others, so this passage that said not just one person, but all people, gave me a great burden. Whenever I heard the message at church that God was sending us as missionaries in the same way he sent Jesus, I would be glad, but burdened at the same time. One day, a message regarding the church community was preached during the worship. Because Jesus had risen, I could say amen to all the words of the Bible, not just my own values and thoughts. Because we were one body, the church community's path was the same path I was to take, and any weaknesses or lacking that I had could be filled by another member. Though I was unable to share on my own, I was able to preach the gospel with my fellow church members on the streets, and when I have the opportunity, I also share the gospel with my colleagues at work. I also learned that, through the gospel, all our problems with personal relationships could be solved. Whenever my environment became too hard to bear, I used to blame the fear I had from my father and the negative influence of my home environment as a child, and was resentful of my father for those reasons. But with the advice and help of other members from our church, I was able to have a family worship service. During this time, I proclaimed the resurrection of Jesus, and as I continued to preach, the living Jesus became more and more clear to me as well. I came to think about Jesus' heart for my father. Jesus' love on the cross was also for my father, whom I had hated and built a wall against. When I stood in front of the love that was given to an enemy of God, that was only deserving of death, like myself, I could only repent, and I became able to sincerely love my father. Amen. Through the gospel of the resurrection, my father also received Jesus as his Lord. Amen. My mother's heart was supposed to last for 20 years. My mother is 61 now. God has allowed her seven more years in the deadline that the world gave us. I do not know when the Lord will call my mother to his side, but I am so glad that we can be together in eternity forever. As I learned about the eternal kingdom of heaven and Jesus' sole lordship over my life through the resurrection, I was able to submit everything to the Lord, including the worries and concerns I had for my mother. I had only found meaning in doing what my mother had wanted, but now I'm a person who serves the Lord only and lives according to the word. Now, with the heart of the eternally unending resurrection given to me by the Lord, I live with the mission to preach the gospel and build up the church wherever I am. I will end my testimony by glorifying God, who has made me a missionary of the gospel. Thank you.